And vision isn't the only sense which can be reorganized with the brain port equipment. Mitch Tyler had an illness which put a second device on the fast track. I had an inner ear infection. I woke up one morning and sat upright and fell over on the sofa um, and the world was spinning. I thought to myself, this really stinks. If I could just have something that told me where up is and where I am in space, it would be great. So I wandered in here and proposed this idea to Paul that what if we could present balance information. Cheryl Schiltz also lost her sense of balance. An antibiotic had destroyed the filaments in her inner ears, which transformed sound into nerve pulses. This wrecked her vestibular system, which controls balance. I said, you mean there's nothing that can be done? What do you mean permanent? There's got to be like medicine or a surgery or something. I can't live like this for the rest of my life. Are you crazy? Cheryl's life was so impaired that the thought that she would ever again work a regular job, much less ride a bike, seemed impossible. Tyler and Kazmarek built the balance device just like the vision device, but with one difference. Instead of a camera for sight, they used an accelerometer, a full motion tilt sensor in a helmet to transmit head and body position to the tongue. I was sitting in my backyard and I received a call from Dr. Baccarita. And he told me about the study that they were doing with sensory substitution. I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to put this thing on my tongue and it's going to make me feel imbalanced. Oh, sure. And I put the, uh, put the device on my tongue and asked to navigate a uh, kind of like a video game thing on a computer. Now the, the square in the middle represents the position of the head. It's in the neutral position. And then if we tip it forward, the sensation moves to the tip of the tongue. So I will feel a signal moving forward or back or side to side. And what that is is telling me, OK, I'm, I'm too far forward, I have to come back and put that signal back into my into the middle of my tongue. And that's where I know that that's where I am in balance and I'm indeed standing straight up. We saw that Cheryl can use it immediately and very effectively. And as a matter of fact, so effectively, so the next logical question was, let's remove it and see how long she can stay without it. Her feeling of stability, what they called the retention or residual effect, lasted in direct proportion to how long she used the device. God, it's so wonderful. <laughs> From there on, we started just built on that and to eventually getting to doing a 20-minute trial. And that's where we recognized that there's a residual. And it was like for an hour, I was normal. And it was just phenomenal. We realized you don't have to wear it all the time. This could be something you use twice or three times a day for 20 minutes. And what happened was the residual grew stronger and stronger and longer and longer to the point where I really didn't even need, I could skip days. And now it's like I don't, I very, very, really, very rarely use it. It rewired my brain. There's no doubt about it. Cheryl's balance system wasn't repaired. Her brain had actually developed a new one. Paul Bakirita died in 2006, but the tactile display lab continues the work. Meanwhile, at a private company, WeCab, commercial versions of the balance and vision devices are undergoing trials. So Paul has now passed the baton on to us, if you will, you know, to the next generation, that we're the ones that get it. The devices that we've developed are all physical manifestations of Paul's vision 40, 50 years ago based on this crazy concept, you know, that you could somehow rewire or reroute information and by rerouting that information, rewire the brain. For Wired Science, I'm Kamala Lopez.